We are taking a trip today, and no, we are not going to the U.S. We have to go all the way to the western side of Australia, and I'm going to tell you guys why. After we enter these coordinates, this is what we get right here. This spot in the ocean, about 800 and change miles off the coast, the western coast of Australia. We have talked about this area before. In fact, the last video I made happened to do with this exact area. We are talking about a tsunami warning system buoy that is once again in event mode. As we can see here, this happened one week ago to the day, and after checking the earthquake chart, we have no recent earthquakes within that area off the coast of Australia anywhere. We do have a fault line here. This is an area that is prone to seismic activity, not to mention we had a 25 meter change in water level. <laughs> So amazingly awesome to be back. It is January 14th, 2021, my friends, 10.05 a.m. And you might be asking yourself, okay, 25 meters, when it comes to the depth of the ocean, that's really not that deep, is it? No, it's not, but when it comes to the measurement of these buoys and how sensitive they are and what they are meant to do, and by buoys, I mean these little dots you see scattered all over the global oceans. And of course, what I want you to focus on is this specific buoy right here off the coast of Australia, which we need to understand is also very close to Indonesia and all the spot islands in this area, very prone to seismic activity. As we all know, at least for those of us that follow the earthquake, we have New Zealand, we have Fiji, Indonesia, this entire area is very prone to large, large earthquakes, maybe not so much the western side of Australia, but this is why we have these buoys scattered all over the ocean and in this area too. If you see a red buoy, that means it is deactivated at the moment, and we had an issue, if you guys remember a few days ago, we had an issue where three of these tsunami buoys were going off along the west coast of the United States. These buoys are meant to let us know about different types of things. They measure weather, wind, all sorts of stuff, but specifically they measure seismic activity and tsunami warning, which is obviously directly connected to the USGS earthquake tracking system, which we have right here. I have pulled up. We watch this all the time. And we could see as far as anything recent when it comes to the west coast of the United States, we have this one quake right here, a 3.5 west of Trinidad, California. This was on the 13th, so this was technically yesterday. And if we pan over Australia and the Indonesia region, we could see these significant quakes have all taken place significantly north of Australia. So this buoy is right about in this area. In fact, there are two of these buoys, one closer to the coast, and then the one that is in activation mode that we are focusing on is way out here in this area, as we can see when we zoom in right here. So once again, let's take a look at this 25 meter difference in water change. That is a big significant difference in water levels, guys. And you can see right here as we measure and as we look at the normal flow of water, the tides changing up and down throughout the day, look at this dramatic dip and we can count how far it has gone. 5,615 meters at this part of the ocean and look at the dip. It is at just between 5,630 and 5,635 up and down throughout a significant period of time and then boom, a significant 25 meter drop. But the funny part is, is the event is only measuring this one little red spot right here. So this was the time in which this buoy was activated once again a week after, as we could see on the YouTube channel, we covered a week ago. This was going on one week ago as well. These event modes go off for 24 hours and then they reset again. So this this is two separate events. This is not a tsunami by any means. In fact, one of the theories by a very, very good YouTuber, one of my favorite YouTubers, Mr. MBB333, he has been covering this as well. And one of his theories is that the ocean floor in this area is moving. Volcanic activity, seismic activity, there is a significant fault line, as you can see here, even from space in some satellite images. Very, very significant fault line. That is the reason that we get so many significant earthquakes in this area and could be the reason why this buoy is moving. These things are anchored to the sea floor. As you can see in this diagram here, I'll leave a link for this picture, this image here that gives you a general idea of how these buoys work. They are anchored to the ground and they measure the different levels of seawater, the different wave values, the air, the weather, and basically they are an instrument and a sensor that is out in the ocean meant for many, many reasons. But one of the most important, as you can see, is our tsunami warning system. Now, when we take all this information and we think about it, multiple things can move these buoys, but when they go into event mode, they often have data associated with them and we can read that data 
if we zoom out a little here, and you can already see that this entire situation has jacked down all the way to 5,615 meters and now is going back up. So we do know that this was an event and this will go off for the rest of that 24 hour cycle, but feeding us brand new data every step of the way. For those of you that don't know Mr. MBB333, he is a long time YouTuber, very, very interesting channel, very much a person I look up to. And you can see here, he covers these buoys pretty, pretty often. So don't be surprised at all to see him cover this situation. He is a very knowledgeable person and always offers some very, very interesting information. As I said before, his theory is that he believes the sea floor is what's moving. That's why we're seeing these weak intervals, it seems like five to seven days in between these buoy activations on this exact buoy. We can see these two are specifically online. These red ones are offline. They don't provide data at the moment. They do turn on and off as maintenance goes on, but we need to understand that these buoys are here for specific reasons and look at the amount of them around the United States. So whenever you see a buoy in event mode, you absolutely want to go check it out. Once again, this website is ndbc.noaa.gov. I will leave this in the description box. What is going on in Australia, my friends? I will be looking into this, absolutely, and you'll be seeing more and more stuff like this on this channel. I will be covering, obviously, the U.S. weather and any sort of global extreme weather until that 2021 hurricane season arrives, and then that will be taken up much of our time, as I'm sure. If you guys have any theories or ideas about what might be setting off this buoy, again, keep in mind the area, keep in mind how far off the coast of Australia. We are about 800 miles off the coast of Australia is where this actual buoy you can see here, let me scroll back over, is in event mode right here, just south of the Indonesia area. And as far as the buoys that went off on the west coast of the US, it was related to a weather system. As you can see here, we have a system of vortexes or these cyclone looking deals that are moving from the western part of the Pacific Ocean, we can see here, and then loop all the way over towards Alaska, Canada, and the United States. This is a common loop that we see throughout the year, and it's very common to see these types of systems, but it's very uncommon to see them set off tsunami buoys. So a lot of different ideas and thoughts about what is setting these buoys off on both coasts, the west coast of Australia and also the west coast of the United States. All right, my friends, I hope I did not bore you with that video. This stuff is very, very interesting and makes you ask a lot of questions. What is going on on the sea floor near Australia? For those of you interested in it, please leave your comments and questions below about any theories you might have. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you have not already, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Every little bit helps. Shout out to Canada as always. And I hope every one of you are safe. I will be back tomorrow morning, if not later on this afternoon. As I said before, any questions or any images, anything like that, my email is in the description box of the YouTube channel. I will talk to you all very soon. Miss you guys, and I will be back later on.